Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping in to a beer from Monkless Belgian Ales. We've uh, reviewed a few of theirs prior. This is a new one for me. Uh, this specific beer is a Belgian style golden ale. It's called Four Devils and it clocks in at 9% ABV. Monkless Belgian Ales is of course based in Bend, Oregon. Now, Belgian uh, ales in the name, but obviously not Belgian in conception. They are an American brewer, so it is a Belgian style golden ale. We can expect to find a lot of impact from the yeast that they chose to brew in this. So I'm looking very forward to jumping in and seeing their take on a golden ale. So let's just get a quick peek at the label here. Um, it looks like the arch of an abbey or the inside of a cathedral there. Uh, might be a little hard to hard to see. It's always hard to get the angle right, but nonetheless, it looks quite nice. Uh, black, red, yellow. That is the colors on the Belgian flag. Just as with Germany, get this cracked gently, gently. All right, perfect. And we're gonna get this poured right in the old all-purpose Sam Adams glass. Yeah, that is a beautiful golden color as I'm pouring this, no question about it. Forming a really nice head too. Lovely. It's only a 12 ounce glass. We're not gonna get the whole pint in there. Okay, visually, yeah, absolutely. That's a true kind of honey golden yellow color. Absolutely stunning. Very, very effervescent. I can see really fast, tight, tiny champagne-like bubbles coming up with just a few kind of medium-sized ones up on the sides. Looks fantastic and I can already smell it from here. So let's get right up over it for a proper sniff. Oh yeah. Yeah, it smells really nice. So there is a little bit of this honey sweetness and really honestly on the nose, what it reminds me the most of is almost like a German or Czech style Pilsner aroma is what's uh, coming out of the glass to me. So it's got this underlying honey sweetness and then there is a very distinct and quite pronounced kind of baked good quality about it. So we're talking uh, toast, we're talking biscuit, we're talking dough. That's really the dominant aromas that are coming off of this. Typically in a Belgian um, golden ale or any of their singles, doubles, triples, etc., they're gonna have a bit more yeast forward dominant aroma profile and flavor. Um, but this one is kind of dominated by the malts. But it smells fantastic. So let's just jump in and see what it actually tastes like. Oh yeah. So it's kind of what I thought was gonna happen. The aroma tells me one thing and the flavor profile tells me uh, that same aroma plus some interesting additional twists and turns. So this, yes, what I could smell on the aroma does translate in the glass in terms of flavor. There is this honey sweetness and there is very much a very pronounced kind of baked good, dough, biscuit, toast, crust, kind of crackery vibe to it, but it has this very distinct uh, Belgian yeast quality about it. And what I mean by that is it's got this subtle undercurrent of spices. Um, German Hefeweizens and a lot of Belgian style beers have this underlying slight cloviness to it. That's coming through in this one as well. Another thing I could tell you I was kind of surprised by this, it's actually got a reasonably decent kick of bitters up front. So there's the sweetness, there's the baked good, there's these kind of spices coming in and there's this really nice rush of bitters. It's not um, sticking around kind of like the intensity of say a big West Coast style IPA, but it's definitely in there. That you don't often get in a uh, Belgian golden ale, but this Belgian style golden ale, wow, they've really done justice by this style. The layer of complexity to this flavor profile, how it comes on and builds, really very nice and does actually very much put me in mind with, uh, put me in mind of many of the Belgian, uh, actual Belgian golden ales I've had over the years. It's very, very well done. Um, this is just, <laughs> it's a real treat for us in America to have a brewer that's brewing in a traditional Belgian style using their ingredients and maybe doing sometimes a little twist and turn, but we can get access to these beers without paying through the nose for them because they do tend to be costly to have the Belgian ones imported, but uh, wow, really nice beer. I'm gonna jump in for a body and mouthfeel, think on this flavor development a bit more, the finish, and see if there's anything else I missed of note. Mm. 
The body is a solid medium bordering on medium heavy. It's got a lot of weight to it. In terms of the mouthfeel, it's uh, got a little bit of resistance. I wouldn't call it syrupy. I wouldn't exactly call it thick or viscous, but it's definitely resistant. Um, almost to the level of say like a double or a triple IPA. It's got that kind of resistance to it. In terms of uh, agitation around the palate and texturally what happens there, uh, it does kind of get creamy and uh, kind of thicken around the palate as you move it about. So it's rather silky as well as having some nice weight to it. In terms of what happens here on the finish, how the flavors kind of after they reach their kind of decay point and they're slowly starting to back out what's happening there, there's this underlying bitter sense still that lingers. It's uh, not intense, but it is still there. And that is paired very strongly with baked goods from that malt bill, as well as this uh, still ever pressing kind of honey-like sweetness to the beer. So it's got a lot of interplay and there is still a little bit of lingering kind of spice suggestion. There's a little bit of a cloviness, a little bit of a cinnamon-like quality to it. So it's all mixed together. Very, very nice beer, very big. Just as a, uh, a true Belgian Golden Ale would be, this is a big beer. It's uh, bold, it's uh, got a higher ABV, and it's got a nice flavor intensity to it. Um, in terms of the actual length of the finish itself, this is significantly longer than your average uh, true Belgian Golden Ale would be, uh, but not in like in a bad way. So there's nothing about this trip that, wow, that's not a Belgian golden ale or a Belgian style golden ale. No, it definitely fits the part. So you should get a little bit more bang for your buck on the end of each sip, just because it does have a, quite a good bit of bitters that are kicking through live and well to help push it out. Overall, a very impressive beer. I'm gonna take my time sip on this coat, my scores. When we come back, I'll get this one ranked from top to bottom. All right, now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're gonna get it ranked. So this is Monkless Belgian Ales Four Devils, a Belgian style golden ale clocking in at 9% ABV. Monkless Belgian Ales is based in Bend, Oregon. So starting with the aroma, the aroma on this beer was very pronounced and it smelled very nice, though it didn't exactly smell like a Belgian golden ale. It smelled a lot more like a Pilsner with just slight suggestions that there may be something else underneath. But overall, it smelled really nice, a very good pungency, which is prototypical for the style. Overall, the aroma gets a nine out of 10. For the taste, the taste on this beer was absolutely incredible. This was as complex and layered and intense as any actual Belgian golden ale I've ever had, and it gets a well-earned 10 out of 10. For the body, this is a, pretty big beer uh, with a pretty high ABV. Belgian beers really, I mean, honestly, their naming conventions and the nomenclature doesn't really give you that much of a hint or suggestion as what you might be jumping into, but their beers tend to be quite big. Golden Ales in particular, while it may not fall under the double, triple, quad uh, kind of stylistic guidelines, you know, they're very similarly related. So a Belgian triple in general is going to be a nice golden color and they're going to be somewhere starting on the low end around a 9-10% ABV. So they do share a lot of commonalities and this for me, the body was right there. It was a nice medium, medium heavy border, which is exactly what I expect for this beer style. The body does get a 10 out of 10. For the mouthfeel, the mouthfeel had a good bit of resistance to it. It wasn't chewy, it wasn't syrupy, but it had a nice bit of resistance, a little bit of thickness, which is very prototypical for this beer style. It's got that higher ABV, more fermentables. It's exactly what I expected. The mouthfeel does get a 10 out of 10. For the finish, the finish on this beer was quite long. I would dare say that this was even longer uh, than your average Belgian. Uh, produced golden ale and really it came down to this beer had a good bit of bitters to it there was a nice little bite so the intensity of the flavor paired with those lingering bitters really helped push that length all the way to the end um, really really nice finish on this one finish gets a 10 out of 10 for the head and retention this one poured great. Um, this is a beer style that can kind of be all over the board. They too do tend to be a bit more carbonated, a bit more active in terms of their effervescence. 
And this was a very good example of that. Head and retention was beautiful. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the appearance, this was exactly what I expected to see when I poured it in the glass. A true kind of honey golden yellow color, uh, exactly representative of the style. The appearance does get a 10 out of 10. For the balance, balance on this beer was really top tier, absolutely top tier for my money. The malt bill that they chose was beautifully put together. The hops that they put in the background had enough to give a bit of a kick without it taking on these IPA-like funky hop notes. It was a nice, just subtle, clean, earthy bitter with no oppressive fruit flavors really creeping in. And the yeast that they put in there added that classic kind of Belgian layer of complexity and those subtle spices that popped in in the back. Just a beautifully, beautifully put together beer. Balance gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the feeling and the intangible, subjectively, I absolutely loved it. This is as good as any Belgian golden ale I've ever had. It does get a perfect 10 out of 10. And finally, as an example of the style, you may have already guessed this beer only lost one point barely in one category. It's about as good as it gets. Example of the style gets a 10 out of 10, which brings the total score of Monkless Belgian Ales, Four Devils, to a 99 out of 100. Uh, I think this might be the highest rated beer I've reviewed so far this year and absolutely well earned. If you're a fan of Belgian beers, Belgian golden ales, any kind of golden ales, these bigger, higher ABVs with all these layers of complexity, this is a Belgian style. So an American brewed interpretation of that Belgian. And wow, I mean, they're just doing great things at Monkless. I've had quite a few beers from there now and they've all been top tier. If that sounds of interest to you, this is one I can indeed highly recommend. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live to YouTube, just turn on the notifications, hit that bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.